Now, what we're going to be doing is we have an equation. Now, remember, an equation we're going to be asking you guys to solve. So remember, solving, you're finding the value of c that makes the equation true, right? If you guys remember, if you had like x or x plus 4 equals 10. To solve for x, we used our inverse operations, right? So you guys would subtract 4 and x equals 6 and so forth. And that was nice and pretty. Um, if you guys see this, you know you have to isolate the c. Now, one of the big mistakes students will do is they'll say, well, let me just take the square root here and take the square root. But the problem is, if you do that, your answer has a c in it. You can't have an answer with the variable. That's like, that's like saying what the vocabulary word is and then using the vocabulary word in the definition, right? You can't, you can't solve for something with the variable in there. So just like what we've done before, when we're solving an equation, and we did this with uh, two-step equations, when we had a variable on both sides, do you guys remember what we did when we had a variable on both sides, what we do? We got the variables to the same side, right? So the first thing you're going to do is get the variables to the same side. So you ought to have c squared plus 5c equals negative 4. However, there's no way that we can combine a c and a c squared because they're not like terms. We can't combine them. So we still have an issue. We can't solve this anyway. We can't like solve for 1c. However, what we can do is set this equal to 0 and then use the zero product property that we talked about in our focus lesson. So what I'll do is I'll put, this, I'll put the 4 to the other side. So for the rest of this chapter, when we're solving quadratics, that means when we have two of our variables, two variables that are not linear, we have a quadratic and a linear variable, you're always going to set them equal to 0. Always set your equation equal to 0. So you guys can see on your problems, you guys have a lot of them that are not equal to 0. Get everything to one side, set it equal to 0. Then the next thing, Sarah, is now we can rewrite this by using factoring, correct? Right? We can rewrite this by using factoring. So I could say what two numbers, if I was going to use my little diamond thing, I would say what two numbers multiply to give me 4 and then add to give me 5, right? Well, I think of the 4s in my head. That's 4 times 1 or 2 times 2. Well, 4 plus 1 gives me 5, right? So I could factor this and do c plus 4 times c plus 1 equals 0. Then the reason why I gave you guys that focus lesson, because now you have a product, right? These are separated by multiplication. You have a product equal to 0. So when you have a product <laughs> equal to 0, you can apply the zero product property and set them both equal to zero. c plus 4 equals 0. c plus 1 equals 0. S subtract 4, subtract 4, subtract 1, subtract 1. c equals negative 4, c equals negative 1. Does everybody agree? Have any other questions? <coughs> 